Välkomna tillbaka. Den här boken som vi ska tala om och författaren fick stor internationell uppmärksamhet när Israels utbildningsminister förbjöd boken i alla skolbibliotek. Den togs bort helt enkelt. Det är en Romy Julia saga där en israelisk student som bor i New York tillfälligt träffar en palestinsk konstnär och kärlek uppstår. Jag har träffat författaren. Lyssna på det här. Welcome to my show, Dorit Rabinian. Thank you so much for having me. And I really enjoyed reading uh, your novel. The novel, the, the name in English is All the Rivers. In Swedish, Alla floder flyter mot havet. Oh, I would never be able to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> But it's a really interesting uh, novel. It's a love story, first of all. Yeah. And... Uh, It's two person, a woman from Israel. She's a student in New York, and she meets uh, by coincidence mm -hmm. uh, a man that she falls in love with. But he's a, uh, he's a Palestinian artist. She doesn't know from the beginning, does she? Uh, very soon, these two are realizing that they are very much attracted one to another, but. Mm -hmm. very immediately they acknowledge that they come from hostile tribes, that mm. their tribes are in conflict. Israelis and Palestinians, she's from Tel Aviv, she's Jewish, he's a Muslim from Ramallah, mm. the West Bank. So they very much know that there's a issue between them, but the flow, the harmony, mm. the way they correspond so... Uh, intimately right from the beginning make them feel like they know each other for for lifetime and they are also in a neutral place so to speak yes. new york it's not at home so they could just be in their love story for a while yeah they are young they're free and they're in in new york mm. it's a it's a great uh, arena mm. to uh, become uh a spirit that is above your identities. Mm. So at the beginning, they just explore one another and enjoy one another mm. until they realize how much they are attached to their tribes, mm. to their origins, mm. to the loyalties that they carry. They want to imagine themselves that they're liberated from mm. everything. They can overcome language, overcome geography, overcome cultural obstacles, but yet there is a tribal instinct mm -hmm. that pounds in them, that makes them lots of trouble. And it's like their destiny, sort of their identities, they can never get free from them because they are so attached to these identities. I believe, I believe that there is something about the liberal ethos that tells us that we're all universal and mm -hmm. humanistic and this is above all our other identities was somehow false. We believed it for a little bit too long and neglected the tribal instinct that nowadays we see rising up mm -hmm. back in America and in Europe. You see that it was, wasn't was taken uh, enough respect to this element of humanity. Mm -hmm. We do need our nationhood, nation feelings to be framed to be respected as other loyalties that we carry to other communities, mm -hmm. our families, our... When the novel came out in Israel 2014, it was uh, received very positively. I mean, the reviews uh, were great and there was also a prize, book prize. Yeah, I was awarded. I was, uh, I was very much embraced by the Israeli readership. Mm -hmm. They were waiting for a long time for a new book of mine. Mm -hmm. And it was surprising because this book suggests uh, 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 an observation of the neighbor in such a empathic way, in such a generous way. And the, the political climate in Israel nowadays is so dark that I was worried... And then the, the war in Gaza broke at the very same time that mm. my book arrives to the shops. And I was surprised of how many Israelis were clinging mm. to this book as a reflection of our hope for correspondence, for dialogue. Even soldiers, I know, in the shelters, ready. Oh, yes. It was very 
uh, touching. They really climb to this story. It, it's described as a modern Romeo and Julia story. And, uh, and, but then something happened that gave this book even um, a more serious impact. Mm. You want to go into this? <laughs> I think we have to mention it. No, I, I don't mind. I don't uh, mind. It's just, it's just that that this political scandal that this book was in the midst of mm -hmm. and took so make such a, a huge echo mm -hmm. is sometimes missing the tenderness, the mm -hmm. subtleness of my work because I'm an author. You know, I worked for six years of trying to formulate one word to another, one sentence to another. And when I start talking about this politician that caused me so much mm. headache and so much persecution and, and at the very same time, he did very well job in promoting my work. But Dorit, let me go back to the tenderness later, but I, I need to put it in oh, this I, context I, because I, I, I think I understand. maybe this has to do with the, um, the power in the novel, in the story. Uh, so the Minister of Education, just of a sudden, wasn't it? There was out. there was a recommendation by the Committee of Curriculum in High Schools that they found this book to be worthy of reading, worthy of teaching, that the young readers in Israel should learn it in schools because it's relevant to them and it can help them in a way to... Uh, open their eyes to what there is going on. We have such a strong interest by the government to shut eyes, mm -hmm. to keep ourselves clamped within our identity. So uh, uh, then the ministerial committee that got this recommendation decided to exclude the book from the curriculum because they found it to be, and I quote, a threat to the Jewish identity of the young readers because they might be encouraged to have a, to have relationships with Arab residents of the country and assimilate mm -hmm. with them, which uh, she said was totally forbidden is a strong word, but this this was not going to happen. I I uh, I need a break, <laughs> just a minute. I need a break because I need my tissue. Is we'll, it okay? We will get you a tissue. Um, I'm sorry. I just, I, I get excited. Yeah. Thank you so much. But George, he, he also proclaimed you to, to be an enemy of state, wasn't it so? Which is really, I mean, it says more about the regime today than there anything is nothing, else. There is nothing more uh, forbidden, according to the Israeli patriotism, than to get go against the army. Mm -hmm. And he blamed me for something that is absolutely false, that this book describes the Israeli soldiers as war criminal sadists. And this is something that he has done on the eight o'clock news in front of the whole nation. And he circled my face around, signaling to his disciples, to his followers, that I am dangerous and that I am anti-patriot. The next day... I had bullies waiting outside my door and I had people spit on me on the street because I described the soldiers as that. And it, this is fake news to begin with and to end with. Mm -hmm. And he knew that he does a very harmful thing to a private person who is, happens to be an author, an artist. This is uh, uh, something that is unforgivable. Mm. And there were people who were trying to reconciliate between me and him ever since, and he has been, been bragging about him promoting my work by banning it. And you see me getting excited yeah. when I talk about it because I feel like it was so irresponsible mm. from somebody who is a, declares to be the minister of education to harass an author, to harass an artist in that extent, mm. it's... Uh... But there are a lot of people and writers. Among these were, for instance, uh, Amos Oz, who really went out and defended your book and your novel and your work. Uh, so there has been a debate, maybe a debate 
about Jewish identity and Palestine identity, which was also good and it, when it was in a good way. First, first, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so pleased to be reminded with the way my teachers of Hebrew literature, the way they were defending mm -hmm. me as if they were like my, my bodyguards. Mm -hmm. They were calling me and saying, don't be afraid, we're with you, you're not mm -hmm. alone. And they were speaking over in the media and really defending me in, 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 in a way that I don't know how could I cope with it mm -hmm. unless. And it's true. It's true. There was a debate, but it wasn't maintained by whom was responsible and could have turned it into a true discussion. Mm -hmm. he Important had, discussion. He had, he had shifted it to be something much, much more violent than it could mm -hmm. have been very respectable, very thoughtful. If we go back to the novel, you have experienced a story similar to this in New York. We were just... Um, Uh, talking about uh, the way we need a spark of truth to inflame a work of fiction, then you have to have a match from reality. So this match I was given by my muse to whom I dedicate the work. Mm -hmm. It's His name was Hassan Hourani. I met him in 2002 in New York. And he was the most charismatic, talented, handsome young man I met. And we had uh, shared the harsh New York winter together and spent it uh, very intimately and very meaningfully. And I never thought that this experience would ever transformed into a novel. But uh, Hassan, uh, very shortly after I known him, has died. And somehow I felt like I was the witness the last witness to tell about him, about who he was, about how special was him and what we had together. The what, what did you experience when it comes to your own identity as a Jewish woman from Israel, from Tel Aviv, in real life? Because identity is interesting. This is the subject of the book. Mm -hmm. The subject of the book, the theme is the identity, is the way the Israeli identity is reflected within the Palestinian identity, the way we have so much in common that we cannot uh, acknowledge unless we come to know only one person. When we watch the news, we see a multitude, mm. we see images, we don't see the particular. And once we have a relationship, once we, we know one person, we redeem ourselves to begin with from this suffocating sack of being a crowd. Once you know a person by heart, you rescue him and you're being rescued and being given your humanity. There is a famous philosopher, uh, a Jewish French philosopher, Emmanuel Levinas, who says that we gain our humanity only when we acknowledge the humanity of the other. Mm -hmm. So this is it. Israelis and Palestinians can be redeemed on the ground until our governments, our leaderships in both sides will be, I don't know, responsible enough to take care of those on the ground. We do rescue each other. There are happenings that you hear like on the sides of the roads, you know, not on the main roads, but those friendships, those intimate encounters Are, are somehow can fix the world, can make the world be a better place. But you are talking about meeting, personal meetings, which are so important in life, of course, and probably the best weapon against racism. But this is also an interesting story about words, how powerful books and words can be. Could you Can you take a step back and see uh, this when you look at your novel? Mm not only be upset, but also see <laughs> what you really <laughs> accomplished. I, 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 you know, um, my fingers are Hebrew fingers, are Jewish, Israeli, Zionist, Zionist fingers. And I had painted a character of a Palestinian Muslim man that ever since the book is published and I have Palestinians 
and other Arab-oriented readers from, across, from around the world writing to me that Khilmi Nasser, my character that is inspired by Hassan Khourani, they paraphrase um, Flaubert saying, Madame Bouvary, c'est moi. They say, Hassan Khourani, Khilmi Nasser, et moi. He is me. So I, the way the, 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 the spirit of Khilmi is captured within my identity, Uh, and the way I could write him to be so authentic and believable that people that don't see eye to eye to me politically, maybe, still identify with him and empathize with him. And of course, Israelis who, who write to me, they say I am a right wing, even settlers, that they opposite my left wing uh, opinions oppositely. They say this person that you wrote, he touched my heart. I mm. carry him in my heart. This is uh, something that uh, literature, when it achieves, it's, it, it's just a great comfort that words can make perhaps a slight difference, difference. in people's hearts. Mm. Yeah. I think many people should read this book. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much, Malou. Thank you for me. having me. Thank you very much. <laughs>